Right, we've got five minutes now to make sure that your gears are shifting correctly. Importantly, first of all to check is to make sure that the ferrules on the end of the cables, that they're snug on there and they're not loose at all. And also that any cable stop such as here, the gear cable is in there correctly inside of that ferrule. But let's move on and look at the actual derailleurs to make sure they're working in tip top condition. Right, so let's start off then with the rear derailleur. Um, now make sure that the chain is in the biggest chain ring at the front and in the smallest sprocket here at the rear. So that's essentially the highest gear. So the best way of doing this is to actually stand behind the bike or sit in my case and look at where the upper pulley wheel is. Basically, that wants to be slightly further across than this sprocket here, the highest sprocket. Uh, that way, when you are changing gear to go into it, normally you're putting quite a lot of flex through the rear end, and sometimes the shifting can't be perfect. So it only needs to be a millimeter or two further across. That way, you're gonna be spot on when you're laying down the power. Next up, we're gonna look at the L limit adjustment screw. So that's the lower limit. So first of all, make sure you're in the smallest chain ring at the front, and then simply give the pedals a turn and try and get it into that sprocket there. So that's the easiest one for you to be pedaling in. If the chain is struggling to get in, make sure that basically you just undo that L screw, just quarter of a turn or half a turn to allow the chain to go on it. And then you're good to go. You might need to just give that a little bit of fine adjustment, but you certainly don't want those jockey wheels to be any further inboard than the actual sprocket itself. That way, if that was to happen, Yep, you could land yourself a hefty repair bill as your derailleur could well get tangled up in the spokes and not only destroy a wheel, but also a frame and derailleur in the worst case. Uh, now, if it is going too far across, stop immediately and actually tighten that screw in a couple of turns, I would say, and then repeat that first process to try and get that chain moving there sweetly. Right, let's have a look then at the front derailleur, shall we? Uh, now, put it into the easiest gear, so the small chambering here and then the big old sprocket here at the rear. Um, now, have a look and see that there's about a millimetre gap between the inner cage plate and the actual outside of the chain, furthest inward. That way, when you're out of the saddle putting some effort through climbing, you're not going to have that annoying rubbing sound. If you do, then there is an L limit adjust screw there and you can simply turn or adjust that either way to either reduce the gap or increase it. And then for the big ring, what you want to have is almost in effect the opposite. So you want a millimeter gap between the inside of the derailleur here and the chain there. So again, there's an H screw for you to have a little play around with and make sure you've got that gap there so that you can shift onto the big ring with ease. Now for the indexing. Yep, a rattly gear is very, very irritating, not only to yourself, but to anyone else who you're riding with. So my preferred technique for this is to actually put the chain into the smallest number of teeth sprocket here at the rear. So basically your highest gear and then undo the cable clamp and then make sure it's pulled through, you know, tightly, but not, don't yank on it. There's no need to actually do that. Then re-tighten it and then change gear into an easier gear and then pedal away. And then whilst pedaling, at the same time, turn your barrel adjuster here to enable the rear derailleur to actually move across onto the next sprocket. Once it's moved over there and there's no rattling or irritating noises, your gears should be indexed fine. So stop, leave that barrel adjuster alone and just actually move up through the gears, up and down through and actually make sure that every gear is engaging correctly. So front derailleurs, how do we actually fine tune those then? Yep, that's right, they don't have a barrel adjuster like here. So for instance, on this Shimano 105 derailleur, we've actually got a small socket that we can turn and that does in fact put a little bit of tension onto the cable either way. Now, if you haven't got one of those, it's quite likely you've got an inline cable barrel adjuster that you can work against each other and then that provides just a little bit of extra cable stretch or release. So you'll be able to adjust your front derailleur that way. Hopefully now your gears are working silky smooth and no missed time shifts. A couple of other things though, just to consider, your gear cables, both inner and outer, make sure that they are nice and fluid and that there's no kinks or bends inside of them as well as grit and dirt because that can affect the gearing. Also, 
Finally, your derailleur hanger. I always bang on about these. You lot probably get sick and tired of me talking about them. Make sure it's straight and in line because that can give you so many problems at the rear. Now, let me know your tips for setting up gears in five minutes in the comments section down below. And also, remember to like and share this video with your friends. If your friend has got a bike that doesn't change gear very well, make sure they know about this video. Also, check out the GCN shop at shop.globalcyclingnetwork.com. You can get an apron so you don't get your GCN t-shirt dirty. How good is that? And now for another great video, click just down here.